gamers welcome back to the channel first though if this is your first time at the channel please do us a favor hit the like and subscribe button below let the youtube algorithm know that you want to see this channel grow i appreciate everyone taking the time to stop and watch this video what we want to cover today is tactical aggression versus tactical patience and obviously you know aggression versus patience kind of a you know a little yin and yang in the uh you know, in a matter of what they're going after, you know, as far as, you know, whatever you're applying it to. But in this case, we're looking to apply it to our gameplay tactics in Vigor. And uh, I don't know if anybody, I don't want to change the subject here, but I don't know if anybody got a chance to watch the Ubisoft Forward. I've been playing a lot of Division 2, and I was really excited for Division Heartland, since it's basically a similar style game, or was, you know, pitched as a similar style game to Vigor. And, um... You know, they didn't really show a whole lot, and I don't think it's ready to come out probably even this year. So, uh, but if you guys want to see some uh, some division stuff, let us you know let us know. I actually linked up with uh, one of the a really cool group, a really cool clan, and I'm not really a, a clan guy, but you know it was my first time playing. I had like three hours in, and this dude like jumped in and helped me, and you know was got like 15. You know, he's got like months into the game basically because he's been playing since the start. So he. Uh, you really helped me out. But uh, anyways, if you want to see some Division 2 stuff, let us know. And, uh, you know, if you're excited for Heartlands, let us know in the comments below. Because we are for sure excited to play that. But let's get back to Vigor here. Tactical Aggression versus Tactical Patience. As always, we try to bring a few examples here. And I'm going to go over what what's kind of in my head as I'm going through the scenes. And, uh, you know, hopefully you guys get some tips and tricks out of this. That will help you survive the Outlands. Because it's deadly out there if you don't know what you're doing. So first up here, we're going to jump into this map, Grand Time Valley. And this one's kind of key because, you know, you got to understand one where the, um, you know, basically where the spawns are. That'll really help you. And you only get that experience by playing the game. I'm going through my normal. Now, is if I spawn here, I try to loot as much as I can in this house. One, because you get the XP just for looting. Then you also get the XP, XP for extracting with it if you live. But uh, it also, you know, I've shown some other clips here. It also um, sets up nicely for your first uh, kill of the encounter. If you just take your time. And sometimes there's a red box back there, so you never know. You get lucky. So now you can hear. He's right outside. And as you can see, he ran into the house. And then he ported me. And as he's looking in his mirror, or as he's looking in his map, yeah, see right there. So when he first comes in, I don't panic. I don't try to get the kill right away. I just let it happen organically. So now he ported me. <laughs> and literally peeks out around the corner. He's like, wait, there's somebody in here? Where are you at? And he just met with my bullets. So, you know, that's, um, you know, that's one thing <clears throat> we've talked about before in our other videos, you know, don't shoot on sight. So don't panic in the moment, you know, being tactically patient, you know, this guy just, you know, got, got taken out. So here's our next one. And just a little context on this map. <clears throat> so, you know, we're at Fisk. And this is the this is the match where you load in, and literally you have like six raincoats that are are rank zero or one on the battle pass. So you know, like, and everybody's on Xbox, and you know they just downloaded the game because they're so tired of all the other shooters out there. So they don't know what they're doing. And I mean, we see it all the time in Reddit, in Facebook, and really anywhere that you you know you meet with your friends and talk about this game. You know, even in the comment section, you know the the noob shield, and you know, obviously it's not a real thing, at least not that I'm aware of as far as game design goes, you know, 
um, for this game. I think there are some things that, you know, that are done to enhance the new player experience, especially with um, the way multiplayer is set up in Unreal and how you can have certain dedication levels or ping rates to new, you know, to a certain player archetype versus, you know, the standard player. But that's my own theory. It's not proven. <clears throat> so I can't say for sure that that's what the noob shield is. But we've all been one, you know, one tapped with the Thompson or the grease gun. And we're like the guy's first or t even 10th kill. And it's annoying. So on these maps where there's new players, I tend to take it kind of slow. Didn't, didn't hurt that this lobby was also boosted because, again, new players, you know, they have that, hey, you know, boost the, boost the lobby three times and, you know, get this XP. And they give them 90 crowns to begin with anyways, or 100 crowns. So, you know, I kind of take it slow. I try to use those matches to really, instead of focusing on, oh, I want to get threat. I kind of use those matches, matches to hone in on how many shots can I get away from. But in this instance, I'm going through and I'm just looting. And I hear gunfights outside. So I don't do the typical, oh, these, these are news. I'm going to run right out and get them. I just kind of let it happen organically, being tactically patient, and, you know, come out the winner. Even when guns and bullets are raining in on me, I don't, I don't panic. Right there, I get the kill. So on this one, <clears throat> this is uh, Kajurston. And you know when you spawn up in that top corner, you're always going to run into somebody at that house right down the way. And here's an opportunity where, you know, I'm kind of like, all right, this. I think this is my first match of that morning. I'm like, all right, I want to go get a kill. Like, I want to start off right, you know, a good match. Right about here, I think I start hearing him. But I also know if I can hear him, he can hear me, provided he's got headphones in. So I keep on looting, moving, scooting, looting. I don't force conflict, I let it happen. Right about here I lose him because I thought he was going to come out the back door and he didn't. And right there I see him. Can I get this sweet headshot? <clears throat> and it's a good thing I didn't force conflict because the guy has a, a machine gun and an, and an A1. So, you know, he could have been an extremely deadly opponent if I didn't wait so he's kind of running out in the open, not paying attention, and I get the kill. And it happens so quick, he doesn't have a chance to react and get me with his machine gun, which every machine gun's the meta right now, so it hurts. And this one's kind of the reverse side of that. Like, you know, on the you know next match, I literally spawn up at the top. So I know... I literally just spawned behind that house, so I'm like, all right, I'm going to see if I can get a kill with this guy, with the guy that just spawned where I did in the previous match. I'm sitting here waiting, I'm like, wait. Is he coming from the other way? There he is. My hand, slips there. My hand slips there, so I fire like two feet in front of him. Like he's just sitting there on one knee, and I'm like, oh, this is perfect. And then I, my 
I fat finger it and I just <laughs> shoot. But you know that's gonna happen. But what's important is when that does happen, how do you recover? Do you remain patient? And do you remain focused? Or do you panic? And you'll see here, I don't, a lot of people will, will get behind the rock that I was just next to and kind of wait for the person to come out, you know, but I know he can hear my footsteps. So I'm applying pressure. Well, he should be able to hear my footsteps, let me say. So I'm going to apply pressure in this instance because I can tell he's probably a new player because one, he's wearing that brown outfit with the, you know, the whole outfit with the face mask. But two, how many of us run right up down that road? <laughs> If you've been playing this for a while, you're not running right up that road. So I already know. All right, this guy's probably new. And new players panic when you pressure. And then, you know, I go to where he was just at probably doesn't have headphones in I was I did the same thing my first 50 matches I didn't wear headphones and then when I first put them in I'm like oh my god this is a totally different game so you know if you're watching this and you're still playing like your first hundred encounters and you haven't put headphones in I'm telling you you will literally get if you're getting a kill every every other game or every two three games you will start getting a kill a game just by headphones because you will absolutely hear players before you see them and because you've been playing with headphones, you'll probably be better at being surprised and being able to survive than the average player because you're not depending on your ears. Now this one, the audio got messed up, so I apologize. So I didn't put any, uh, you know, the audio is not here. But as you can see, I come up to this spot right to the Bard House right after spawn in. I can see down to the Bard House that the, you know, the wooden um, block or whatever, you know, the, the boarding on the windows is no longer intact. So it tells me somebody's in there. So I'm like, cool, I'm lined up right here. I got a bugle. I mean, I can get a quick headshot and, you know, get the bar to house loot. I think I zoom in again. Yep. And as if by ring coat magic, he runs right out after I'm unzooming. So I'm like, dang it. But I don't panic. As you can see here, I just kind of let it happen organically. Keep my tactical patience about me. Don't let him know I'm here. And he stops again, and I get the kill. And as you can see, when I come down here, we'll get all his loot. And we were right. He went, he got the Bard House. He was smart. He didn't go out the same way he went in. But you can't stop in the middle of the, you can't stop out in the open on a, on a map like this or any map, really. You got to find, if you can't find cover, you got to find concealment. You got to at least attempt to hide yourself in some way. Otherwise, you know, there's always going to be somebody around. So again, you know, it's a part of this, of this game is always expect someone to be around you at all times because more than likely there is and the more you play this the more weird or you know unpractical places you'll stop and people don't expect you there because everybody's so used to looking where they're going are so used to the path of action that takes place on every match that they don't expect you to be in random places it can even be out in the open i mean you saw on the, the clip before in grand time valley i'm literally sitting out in the open next to a rock just on the ground I have no cover, no concealment, but no, you know, that was a new player, but I don't think even an, uh, uh, unless you're like playing on an Xbox Series X or a PlayStation 5 where you have like extremely high fidelity and on a 120 hertz TV or monitor where you would see a player, you're probably not going to see a player sitting there. So that's really the points we wanted to make today. Patience is a deadly virtue. So make sure that you deploy it when possible. You know, tactical aggression is always important as well. You know, you need to push when you can push to, you know, make the player, other player, your opponent uncomfortable. And that is a, is a valid strategy. But being patient can be just as deadly. And more surprising, as you saw in the first clip, he's in the house looking for me after he does the, the port. And he, as soon as he undoes his map, it's, he's met with my bugle bullets. So 
Um, and then last, you know, almost, we're almost at 500 subs. I think we're like two or three people away. So I can't thank you folks enough for coming back, continuing to watch. We have over 400 returning returning viewers on every video. Um, so you guys are, are coming in, watching, commenting, liking, subscribing when possible. Like, I, I just appreciate, you know, the community. And I appreciate you guys really, you know, coming and saying hi, watching the videos. It really makes a difference. Again, we do this for fun. This is kind of like my creative outlet. So I appreciate that, you know, people are connecting and, and you know, hopefully these tips help because, again, that's what we try to do here. We just try to help people. So um, thank you for watching. Until next time, gamers, take care and stay safe out there, Outlander.